Hi and welcome. In this part of the course, I'm going to focus on adding usability to your user form. And I'm going to focus on two things here, enabling and disabling controls. So notice that this guy right here, we cannot click it. We cannot select anything in it. And notice there's a big blank right here. But when we make a check next to I agree that I love animals, uh, this guy appears and this is now usable. And I'm going to focus on how to get a control enabled or disabled, which is what happened here. But this part down here where it goes completely away and then comes back is going to be saved for the premium course. And there's a link to it in the description of this video. So this is going to be a pared down version of what I have in the full version, which has so many other little tiny things like this, where you hover over controls and text will pop up. You can set specific buttons to run when you hit enter. You can also control the tab order. As simple as it seems, there are four different sections for that just in this form alone. So there's so many things that you can do. But in addition to controlling this guy right here, enabling and disabling him, and making it so that you can and can't copy and paste what's in it, I'm also going to show you what's one of my favorite things for a form, which is how to close it using the escape key. So if we uncheck this guy so the validation won't pass for this user form, and I click Submit, there is a little window here. This is a standard message box. And the beautiful thing about it is that I can simply hit the escape key right now and it's gone. But for user forms, that is not a default behavior. However, now it is. So let me show you how to do that. Alt F11 to go to the VBA window. Let's talk about what we did with this control here, the combo box control. I'm going to use a different control to show you how to enable and disable it, but it's going to work the same way. So let's go for the text box. It's a simple little guy. We have a default value. We want to control if the user can input a value into it or copy a value from it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is locked. That's the property that controls if you can change what's in here, but still allows you to copy the value. So click your text box and go to the properties window and go down to a locked. See it is false right now. So if I run this form, it's set to go to the animal tab by default. I can remove the text, no problem. But when I make this guy locked, false becomes true, run the form, I can still select it, I can still copy it here and then paste it into a Word document or wherever else I want it, but I cannot delete it. No matter what, I cannot change what is in here. So that is really useful when you want to do something like display a unique ID for a record. That's something that should never really be changed, but you may want the user to be able to copy that and then paste it somewhere else so that they can use that ID number. And now let's go for the other property, which is going to completely disable this guy, so we can't select anything. So click it and go to the Enabled Property. These are separate properties, but you can use them together if you want. Enabled, set it from True to False. So basically it disables it. And you can see it looks a little bit different already. It's grayed out. So if we go to Run It and go to Notes, we cannot select anything. Now this is all really nice, but you're probably going to want to be able to change if it is enabled or locked dynamically. And in this case, we want to make sure that the user agrees that they love animals before we're going to give them one. So they have to check here. And then once they do that, we want them to be able to input values. So let's go ahead and make that work. And for this, we are going to double click the check box. And we get to the code window for the form and the click event for the check box. I'm actually going to go ahead and change this to the change event. So we have check agree, which is the name of the check box. That's all it is. And click event. So we go inside here and then go to the right drop down and it says click and we just go to change. Then we can delete the click event and this is the code that's going to run when our checkbox is changed. 
let's first figure out if the checkbox is checked or not. So if chk, control space to fill that in, check agree, dot value equals true, then else, and if. And the value property returns true or false. So if we're here, that means it's true. What do we want to do? Well, let's make our text notes enabled. So we access the enabled property, and we set it equal to true. And if we're also going to be using the locked property, text notes, control space to fill it in, locked equals false. And we can select this guy, go down here. If we get here, it means it is not checked. So we change true to false and false to true. That's all that we do. So let's run it and see what happens. Go to the notes tab. We cannot click any of this, can't do anything, check mark, and we are good to do whatever we want. That's all, just a couple settings and a little bit of code, and you get some magic. Now let's go ahead and make this guy close when we hit the escape button. This is a really, really easy thing to do. I probably should have put it at the beginning of the tutorial, but that's okay. All you have to do is to click a command button that you want to run when you hit the escape key. And then you set it to run when you do that. So you have to have a command button that's going to close the user form in this case. And we will click the cancel button. That's what it does. And nicely enough, the property for this is named cancel. So we go over here and the cancel property we set to true. I've already done that. By default, it's going to be false. So if I set it back to false and then run this guy, I hit escape, nothing happens. We can close it by clicking cancel or the little X button, it doesn't matter. Set cancel to true. Run it and bam, as easy as that. Now the full version of this tutorial has so many additional usability features like going to different tabs and then selecting controls to make them the default control that's available to input data into when the form loads or changing the order of tabbing through all the controls because like I said there's one, two, three, four different places where you have to do that in this particular form and there could be more in yours. There are so many little tiny things that you can do to make your form so much more useful for the user, including even making it very difficult to accidentally delete or input a sensitive record when it shouldn't be so easy to do. There's all these little things that you can do that I show you in the full version of this tutorial, and the link for that is in the description of this video. But I hope that you found this tutorial helpful, and if you did, please subscribe, hit the bell icon, and give it a thumbs up. I hope you guys have a great week.